Hi, so my name is Paulina. Uh, I work at Hugging Face and today in this talk I will tell you how to hug a duck or how we at Hugging Face use DuckDB to power uh, no-code exploration for our users. Um, I want to tell you how many different things uh, and sometimes maybe unusual things it's also possible to do with DuckDB and how to go from using DuckDB to do quick and efficient uh, analysis of data on your laptop to scaling it to thousands of data sets uh, openly accessible. Uh, a couple of words about me. Uh, at Hugging Face, I work on open source tools related to data, which I'm going to talk about today. Before open source, I was developing more like classical machine learning applications in uh, enterprise companies. And before that, I got my education in computational linguistics and linguistics. And by the way, this picture, as well as other pictures in this presentation, are generated by an image generation model that was trained on Hugging Face logos. I was asking her to, I was asking the model to generate Hugging Face with a duck. And sometimes the results are good, sometimes they are not. This one is quite cursed, I think, but <laughs> I really like it. Uh, and this slide is about me, so. Um, a couple of words about Hugging Face. We are a collaborative open source and open science um, platform around machine learning. Uh, and uh, we are guided by values of transparency, openness, and collaboration. So traditional open source values. And our mission is to make good machine learning uh, more approachable and accessible for people with different backgrounds. And that means that we try to focus not only on custom uh, complex libraries for developers, but also on low code interactions. And we use DuckDB exactly for this. Uh, so we, de we do many, many different things at Hugging Face, but I'm going to focus on the main part of the Hugging Face ecosystem, which is the Hugging Face Hub. If you don't know what it is, this is a collaborative platform sort of a uh, GitHub for machine learning stuff, or AI if you prefer uh, AI. Um, and currently we host about 500,000 models, machine learning models. They are uploaded by the community. They are, can be suitable for different tasks, like we have conversational models like ChatGPT. Uh, there are image generation models, like the one that I used to generate images for these slides audio tasks, um, like transcription, many, many other different things. And in a similar way, we also have 100,000 uh, data sets on the hub, and they are also different modalities, and they contain data of different types, like audio, text, images, tabular data, and so on. Um, first, a bit of a context. Um, uh, several years ago, the purpose of hosting datasets on the Hacking Space Hub was to provide users um, to easily access them to train models. Uh, and to do this, we created the library which is called Datasets. This is a Python library. You can import, uh, you can, uh, that allows you to import any dataset from the Hub in, with one line of Python code, um, like in this snippet. And it's nice because now we can easily plug any data set from the hub into training evaluation cycle. Uh, but we all know where the problem here is. Uh, it is that people just do it randomly. They just do so, took some, take some random data and they just pass it to some random model. They don't know much what's inside the data. And for us, that, mean, that meant that we need to find a way to connect these thousands of datasets on the Hugging Face Hub to, um, with uh, tools for data analysis, for example, with DuckDB. Uh, and to make it possible, at first, what we did, we unified everything that's on the Hugging Face Hub. Let me explain what I mean. So essentially, each dataset on the hub is a GitHub repository. Uh, with the main branch, uh, a repository with data files. Files can be of different formats. For example, here is a CSV dataset, but it can be like text or audio files, whatever. 
And to make it easier to work with them with external tools, we converted each public data set from each, uh, its original format to Parquet format. Um, so um, in each data set repository, there is an additional uh, sort of utility protected branch where we have host Parquet files for, uh, for the data sets. For now, we do this for the first part, five gigabytes of raw data. And um, they are publicly accessible. There is also a file which is called index.tp, and I'm going to talk about this later. So yeah, this way we have everything in Parquet format, which means that now we can use whatever framework um, you prefer that supports working with a Parquet format, including, of course, stackdb. Let me give you just a quick um, snippet. Uh, this is for Python, and if you are doing this from Python, we provide a custom file system implementation, which you can import from Hugging Face, uh, Hugging Face Hub Python library. You register file system, um, and then you can use LSS to access any data set on the hub, like this, like HF uh, data sets. You say data set name, uh, say that it's Parquet branch, and use globe pattern to access just all Parquet files in a data set and then do whatever you want to analyze the data. I'm not going to show you how to uh, uh, use StackDB in queries. You probably know it's better than me. So um, nice, we can use StackDB to query every public data set on the Hugging Piece Hub, but still there are tons of data sets on the Hub. Um, how do we know if they are garbage or not? Like with this image, for example, here we can clearly see that this is just a pure garbage input of an machine learning models. And our goal is to make it in the same way easy to understand this for complex data. We want to help people uh, to make informed decisions about what data to use. And we are doing this with DuckDB, of course. Um, so with DuckDB, we implemented three features on the Hugging Face Hub, um, which are full text search for texts, filtering, like SQL-like filtering, and statistics. Let me show you each of them. Uh, so the first feature that we did was full text search. Um, yes, DuckDB supports full text search, which is already cool um, as an extension. Um, quickly, how it looks on the hub, like this is a main data set page, open some data set, there is a nothing, it's so unclear, okay. There is a search bar, you just type duck, you see ducks, uh, there is nothing for DuckDB, I'm sorry. Um, and technically, this is very simple. So for each data set, we create, along with the parquet uh, files, we create a file which is called index.duckdb, and it contains all the data in a DuckDB format and a full text search index. And the, the file is hosted in the same branch where the parquet files are. And the search process itself is done also very simple. Like we have a Python application that uh, exposes a search endpoint. Um, when it's called, the application first checks if the index.duckdb file is in local cache. If it's not, it downloads it from the cloud storage, and then it just runs a single SQL query on this file. So basically, the whole search is just a single SQL query. Um, and this is a very simple feature, but I think it's already quite powerful because you can already have a quick understanding of what you might find in your data and whatnot. Uh, but I want you to, sh to, sh to show you a pretty maybe unexpected case where it proved to be useful, which is content moderation. Um, so Hub is an open platform and everybody can publish a data set, but we, there is still an option to report a data set. And um, when um, somebody reports that the certain data set contains inappropriate words, it's just easy for our content moderation team to prove these claims because they can search the data set itself. Uh, how do you like that? Like DuckDB powers content moderation. I think it's cute. <laughs> not, not, not that obvious. So for the next feature, um, filtering, um, that's how it's, it works. Um, so data set viewer, we have distribution of uh, data uh, in the columns and you just click on bars and you just have 
roles um, that fall into this uh, category in distribution or, for example, for numerical data, like click and you get filtered data sets. And uh, the approach here is pretty much the same as for um, full text search. Um, so the application looks for index.db file, downloads it, downloads it if it's not here yet, not locally yet, and then uh, run a single query. And I'm even ashamed of putting this query on the screen because it's like three, six, six tokens. Um, and that's it. And again, I think it's a very powerful feature. Um, what I especially like to use it for is to um, check for extreme values, of course. Uh, for example, let's take a look at some one of the most popular text data set on the hub. Uh, there is a string uh, feature response. We see that most of the texts fall into the same length category, uh, but there are some outliers, and we can see that this is just pure garbage, this one and this one, no div, no div. So with DuckDB, we can easily check if there are garbage or not. And another thing that we experimented with using DuckDB is to calculate some statistics over data set columns. Um, you've already seen them, these charts on the, on the columns, above the columns, but like for numbers and for strings, we show the distribution of string length. Um, and yeah, again, very simple, like using the parquet files that we prepared, we load them with DuckDB, we run a set of queries to get the measurements we need, like histograms for numbers, counts for um, categories. Then we store the results of computations in a um, database of, um, in a MongoDB database. This is like the, so the idea here is that the results and the statistics are already pre-computed for everything on the hub and you can just fetch it when needed. There is also a public endpoint for that. And I said experimented here because in the end we had to switch to another framework actually. Um, but this was in production for like um, half a year, I think. Um, but overall still <laughs> our experience is very positive. I want to share it, just summing up. Um, of course, the first thing we enjoyed is how easy and lightweight uh, DuckDB is. Um, I, you've seen that all the features that I've shown you are technically implemented, just very simple, that there is even not, not that much technical details that I can share. Um, what impresses me is that we didn't have to configure any extra setup for search. Um, which is amazing, uh, it, but despite of being so easy, it's quite reliable because I want to mm, emphasize that Hub is a very big platform, like very large scale platform. We have like thousands of users per day, uh, 300,000, I think on average, and we have terabytes of um, exported parquet files. Um, so yeah, the, the fact that this works is cool. And what especially like about DuckTB and what, what impressed me is how universal sort of it is because when we implemented search first, it was super easy to extend it to filtering. While I think semantically, these features are pretty different, uh, quite away from each other. And of course, we want to appreciate the DuckTB team support, despite uh, they said that they are not as active on GitHub issues. It's not true. Bugs that we reported, bugs that we reported were fixed, and we really, really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, finally, I would just ask you, feel free, please, to play with the datasets on the hub, open feature requests and bug requests. The code is open source. Um, 
read the API docs because all the features that I've shown you, they are in the graphical interface, but also the API is public uh, and available. And that's it. This is how we are hugging the duck. Thank you.